chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, that's Ola Olukoyede, has called and audit executives in banks across the country to be more vigilant and assertive in tackling financial crimes in the banking sector. In a statement, the EFCC boss is said to have frowned at the raft of fraudulent activities associated with the local banking industry and charged bank auditors to do more in sanitizing and strengthening the financial sector and growing the economy. According to him, banking fraud across the country often has either inside or outside enablers. Arise News Analyst Dayo Shobwale is here again to offer his opinion, this time on the EFCC chairman's position on corruption in the local banking sector and the need to strengthen the financial institutions to curb financial crimes. Good afternoon, Mr. Shobwale. Welcome yes, to you. Newsday. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure of being here. you. Right. Let's get straight into it. Of course, the statistics that were shared in that same report, 70% of financial crimes linked to the banking sector, according to his statement. Does this surprise you in any way? Uh, well, it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me. Because essentially the financial sector is dominated by the banking sector. You have insurance and other, but they are small fries compared with the banks. And you see, he made mention of one thing there, that in the process of uh, uh, committing this fraud, they, 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 they allow the growth of the economy to suffer. That is what is of importance. Because otherwise, if the banks allow frauds, at the end, they liquidate themselves. So it is in their own interest to manage their, staff, their assets and liabilities so that they make profit and they don't allow fraudsters to get them out of business. But you see, um, like the EFCC rep uh, boss's representative at, the, at that conference, the conference of uh, bank auditors, you know, he said that they have some bank frauds inside and some outside, and then there's connivance. I think he got it wrong. Because there can be no bank fraud without connivance. There must be an insider staff who must collude with somebody. But with the advent of electronic banking, it becomes a different case. It's garbage in, garbage out. And that is where customer education, staff education matters. Because, you see, the, the, the banks have, they, they compete by turning out new products, new services, through innovation. So they want to, to be ahead of their competitors. But in the process, they forget that the rate of obsolescence of electronic products are very fast. Before they use it for a year, new ones have come aboard. And they have not been fast enough in training their staff to monitor those products. Those who are outside, especially in this age of technology, who are the hackers, they are ready looking at loopholes. They are monitoring phones, they are monitoring transactions, uh, uh, foreign exchange transfers. Uh, that's why you have 419 for which you are notoriously famous all over the world at one time. They are still at it. But in terms of bank management, you see, um, when big banks give out loans, they are supposed to monitor the loans to see that the money is used for the purpose for which it was lent. But invariably, uh, customers and managers could have, you get me? Before you can give somebody a loan, there must be a, a security. The bank must not be left naked. But you see some people, they will bring uh, <laughs> big people. They put a palace as security. Tell me who will buy a palace to recover money for the bank. And people connive. There are forms for the managers to fill, to make, and the legal department too. There are forms for them to fill, to make sure that the bank is covered. But they will obtain management's approval, board approval, for whose sums of money and when there is repayment irregularity, there is loan default, the bank is left naked. That is why if you go to the big banks, you see, I worked in a bank before, and I was a AGM special assets. You know what that means? Debt recovery. <laughs> <laughs> you get me? It's, That's a <laughs> tough the, the portfolio. <laughs> dangerous. Yeah. But I survived it. And actually, I had no stomach for it. But you see, you, you discover that if you do, do no, vigorous analysis, because you have to do analysis before you can give out loans, if the analyst does it well, 
you see the, uh, uh, the, the viability of the loan. You will see the points at which they will need money and the points at which they will need to be held one way or the other. If that is done rigorously, there will be less need for loan default. But you see the banks, it's as if they anticipate a failure of loans. They have very big debt recovery unit. You are asked, my opinion there was that if you have done your own work well, you don't need this. Uh -huh. But it is when you have such defaults, such new products that customers and staff don't understand well, and outsiders can, can exploit, that is why you have elements of fraud coming out. But then, you see, there's another bigger one than the internal one. You know, the banks have auditors. Auditors, well-established uh, chartered accountants. But you see, when they get too chummy with the management, they're supposed to look at the, the bank's books to see sources of funds, allocation of funds, recovery, before you can calculate profit and loss. You get me? Or put something in reserve. But if the auditors and management get too chummy, that oversight responsibility suffers. That is why so many banks failed in the past. So what the FCC is doing is to caution the banks. And when you look at it, I, well, I think I have to say this. When you look at it, the banks dominate the economy. The banks dominate the economy. But the problems you are in today, economically, go and look at the balance sheet of the banks. They are running, they are making huge profits. The major, they are making huge profits. And that is why I quarrel with laissez capitalism. You get me? But unfortunately, unfortunately, our president now has a book which he wrote together with the American consul, Brown Brown, that says the opposite of this, that the banks are making paper profit, they are using uh, money as wealth, whereas it's productivity, manufacturing of things that you can sell and earn something export-wise that makes for a, that make for a strong economy. But that is not there. So it is good that the EFCC boss has I mean, linked bank fraud with retardation of our economic growth. So it is up to government to monitor. It is up to the, the banks are making profit. Huh. So I don't think they are bothered. Or what do you think? <laughs> they are not bothered. They are making profit. But this, this is our, how do I put it now? Our bookkeeper now. That's if FCC is one. Yes. Raise the alarm. Let us all be alert and question the banks. Well said, right. Mr. Chevalier. Now, in terms of strengthening financial institutions, um, I saw some recommendations that were made, and one of them is interagency collaboration. That's effective collaboration and information sharing among law enforcement agencies, regulatory bodies, and financial institutions. The other is international cooperation. That's financial crimes often have cross-border implications, hence this is what's being recommended. <clears throat> Are you... What do you make of these two recommendations? And if you're fine with them, how would you like to see yeah, things no, kick banking, off? You see, every bank has the international banking department. That's one it's strengthening, the though. They, these need yeah, to be strengthened. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, 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 asking, I'm uh, uh, answering your question. Okay. Every bank has international department. And you see, many people want to work in that department in the bank, for obvious reasons. Especially since the dollar, I mean, since the naira has collapsed. That means people want to work there. Because that's the backbone of the banks. That means, and that is where even the FCC should go and have a look at. Okay. There was a time remittances into this country that means, were meant to be delivered to the beneficiaries in dollars. It was Michael Lani, our former financial secretary, who raised the point that Nigeria is the only place where when they remit that dollar to the beneficiary, Nigerian banks will convert it and give, give those people uh, the money in Naira. I said Nigeria, because other countries, Brazil, in, uh, India, uh, remittances from abroad contribute substantially to the growth of their economy. You get me? So, but, you see, uh, I know of Interpol. But you see, international banking is even more sophisticated 
and more technologically advanced than local banking. What they are talking about in that conference is local banking. But it is not that, that you, you mentioned it. You can't do international banking without networking, without, I mean, going through countries and exchanging currencies. So that is well monitored. But then, fraudsters penetrate it. Eh? And invariably, it's collusion between insider staff and the, uh, the, the only thing is that this time around, uh, it has nothing to do with uh, 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 network fraud. In fact, the, the, the best hackers, when they get them, happen to be small boys, just playing. Uh, but now they have learned to make money for it, from it. That's why you have the Yahoo boys in our midst. Uh, they are first to use their you know, first knowledge of uh, the internet, from the phone they use and things like that, and they hack. But then let me tell you another basic thing that the banks fail to do, customer education. You are supposed to be told when you have your ATM, you get me? Don't put your ATM where you have, where your, your pin is. You get me? Some elderly people, they say they have ATM, they, they don't use the ATM, they put it in their uh, wardrobe. Um, first, they can't remember, they put, they write the, mm -hmm. <laughs> the pin there. So, invariably, it's those close to them who will do it. Some almost committed suicide when they discover it's those living with them because the, the banks, they will have this. <laughs> so, that is it. Uh, technology, uh, uh, international collections, connections, they are part of banking. Madam Bank. So next question. All right. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, that's all we have time for. But you, you okay. did go in, in, into a lot of depth yeah. with this. And yeah. I think it is a conversation that will be continuing. Mr. Shobale, thank you so much for your input on this topic. Mm -hmm.